Greetings and welcome back to the Casual Wargamer. 10th edition has been out now for six months, just over, I think. And it got off to a very shaky start. Uh, a lot of us feel that it was released slightly prematurely and Games Workshop used us, the player community, to sort of iron out the problems. But now I think the game's in a good place. I think the codices coming out are actually quite good. There's not a lot of power creep. But there are some things I think could be done to improve the game. Now, obviously, I know these are not going to be um, popular with everybody, and most people will probably disagree with me. But I would like to share them here and see what you think. There's four main things, four, where I think the basic elements of the game could be improved in no particular order <laughs> the first is command points we need more of them previously under ninth edition we had or could end up with loads of cp but at the same time we had a million and one stratagems and that wasn't great as you well know now you end up with the six that you get for your detachment, plus um, where is about eight or nine, I think, in the core rulebook. But we never have the CP to use them. And one of the things that stratagems did in games was make them much more cinematic, which always seems to be part of the goal of Games Workshop, but they tend to not quite reach that pinnacle point where they need to be to do it. And restricting CPs... I think was not a great move for this. At the moment, you get your one per player turn and you can have up to one more. I would change that. I wouldn't let you just get infinite. That would be a bit silly. But I think you should be capped at like three or four per turn and actually allow players to use those stratagems. Make the game far more interesting. And as I say, slightly more cinematic or thematic, depending on how you want to look at it. Right now, when I play a list, I end up um, using Armour of Contempt, Grenades, and maybe one or two from my detachment. Because I just don't end up with the CP to use them. Give us the CP, let us use them, and I think you'll end up with slightly more interesting games. I won't actually say slightly, I think you will end up with more interesting and more fun games. Secondly, they still haven't got terrain right. And I don't know what it is with Games Workshop, but they don't seem to know how to handle terrain. They always fluff it up. So this is what I would suggest. Take kind of a page from One Page Rules. Terrain falls into three categories. Either... It's obstructing, which is ruins and buildings. It's light cover, forest, swamp. Or what I would call barricade or scatter terrain. So they're standing behind a boulder or a pipeline or a barricade or something like that. If you're, you keep the whole thing of obscuring for ruins and buildings. You can fire in, you can fire out, you can't fire through. I would couple this with return true line of sight to the game. It's all right to say you can't fire through, but if you've got something that can see over the top of it, whether it's an aircraft or um, a knight, a, um, or you've got snipers or something like that up on a, a, a tower, and you can see over and you can see the mo body of the model, not an antenna, not a wing, not a gun sticking up in the air, the actual body of the target, you should be able to shoot it. Don't see why that's an issue. Put enough terrain down on the table like you're supposed to do, and it really shouldn't be an issue. But you should have the ability to fire over things. True line of sight, bring it back. Anyway, getting back to what I was saying. If you are in cover, you get plus one to your armor save. Cap it at three like they do at the minute, if needs be. Um, 
but you get plus one to your armor save if you're in a terrain piece. If you are firing through, which you can do with light terrain, these woods and things, you get minus one to hit. So if you're firing through a wood at a ruin uh, where there's a unit standing in there, not only do you get minus one to hit, they get plus one to the armor save. Pucker. And barricades, you just treat exactly the same way. If you're within an inch of it, and it is between you and the attacking unit, you get the cover bonus. Um, sorted. You know, that's all you need terrain to do. And they never got seem to get it right. Something along those lines, and terrain becomes good again. Thirdly, one of the things they changed recently was to change some mortal wounds into devastating wounds, which did exactly the same job on the tin, but it didn't jump models. At the moment, you could say put three mortal wounds into a unit and potentially that's three models dead. I've never liked this as a mechanic in 40k. It always feels a bit um, bad, wrong fun, really, from the game designer's point of view. Devastating wounds, which is what they changed a couple of things to in one of the recent data slates. It doesn't matter whether you do three more or three devastating wounds, rather. It only affects one model. If you, you've got to hit three times to get those same three um, kills. I would remove mortal wounds, replace the whole lot with devastating wounds, and adjust things accordingly, such as custodians. Um, being able to resist such things. Devastating wounds means you are still doing great damage, but you're not wiping out entire units in one go. Your big um, sort of like um, D cannons and things, your wraith size, whatever they're called, can still be used for what they're supposed to do, which is taking out tanks. A lot of devastating wounds, that is still going to do the same job. But you're not going to be able to blast through entire units, which spoils the fun. You know, Nobody likes to pick up an entire unit and just plonk it to one side. Turn mortal wounds into devastating wounds. Um, amend those units that deal or have fewer pains or whatever against mortals, and we're good. And lastly, we need to adjust how aircraft work in their movement. Right now, it's absolutely do lally what they've done with aircraft. So right now, if you want to fly over something, you've got to actually measure the distance up, across, and back down again. And that makes no logical sense whatsoever. Something that is flying, an aircraft, should just treat it as flat, and they go over it. They're already hamstrung slightly by the turn two in, um, potentially turn three to actually do anything, which is why they're a bit naff. But then they're hindered again by not being able to fly over a terrain feature properly. Let's get rid of what they do with that, and let's just bring it back as it's flying. It can go over terrain features. It, gives planes a reason to be used again they're just too slow at the moment because of this and it doesn't make any sense <laughs> i'm sure somewhere in there there are little tweaks that could be done to the various um rules um in addition to this um such as at the moment if you've got something that for a zero CP can reuse a battle a tactic. Well, why is it always just battle tactics? Why can it not just be any stratagem? You know, um, that needs to be fixed as well. But that's kind of more of a codex thing rather than a, a game mechanic thing. Those are my suggestions to Games Workshop. Implement these and you'll have a much better game system on the 10th as i say it's not going to be popular with everybody somebody's going to find fault with it and that's fine i'm not a games designer but i know what would make the game more enjoyable for play 
Let me know what you think. Agree, disagree. If you would change anything else, pop it down. Let me know. In the meantime, give us a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you next time. Take care, guys. And good gaming.